Kia ora folks. Welcome to the workshop. Today we're going to be installing a helical cutter head in our DeWalt 735 planer. <laughs> I know this has been done to death, uh, but I was pretty excited about this whole thing. So I thought I would film a video and uh, I think it's turned out pretty well. I think I've managed to record every step in the process. I don't think I missed anything out. Uh, so full step by step of how I did this with my machine. If you're thinking of doing this sort of thing yourself, you might want to look up the terms of the warranty for your DeWalt. Just saying. All right, let's get into it. First up, this is the gearbox side. This is the handle side. And uh, we also need to take stuff off the top. First up, make sure it's unplugged. Uh, give it a clean if it's got sawdust on it. And uh, then take the lid off. Next, remove the dust extraction cover. And the blades, eight screws, the uh, handy tool supplied by DeWalt. It's got these magnets on so you can easily lift the blades out without cutting your fingies. Just use the little uh, locking device to spin the blades around or allow the blades to be spun around. And once you've got all the blades off, take that locking device off. People mentioned having trouble getting these screws off um, and with the spring flying free, but my spring was locked in and the screws came off easy as, so I don't know. Anyway, here's all the things we took from the top, all the screws, the bits for the dust extraction, the dust extraction cover itself, and the bits from the uh, locking plate. I just kept them all together on the lid. Next, we'll move across to the gearbox side. Take off the cover first. And the uh, tensioner spring. And the two little snap rings. If you don't have a a snap ring tool, you'll probably need to get one before you do this job. This is just a cheapo one from, from Bunnings. Then remove the chain and the sprockets and uh, keep that all together as one assembly. Then on my uh, planer, there was a little spacer washer on there. Take the gearbox out by removing these three screws with the uh, tool supplied with your planer. And then uh, partially remove the gearbox and rest it on your bench. Now we'll jump across to the handle side. Move the handle. Just pop the screws back where they came from so you don't lose them. Then the uh, chain cover off. Then the uh, tensioner spring, a little bit fiddly, but get in there. Then the idler. And use a four millimeter hex to take off the left hand sprocket. I just popped the chain and sprocket over here for now, but it actually got in the way. So I move the chain and that sprocket off. So the next thing you have to do is get that belt off. You can help maneuver it by maneuvering the cutter head around inside. Yeah, see, I just, the chain's in the way for this bit. Uh, gloves on so you don't pinch your phalanges. And uh, yeah, just work that belt off. It stretches a little bit, so it's not too hard. And pop that over there. Now this, this nut, 24 millimeters, is not a standard size that you get with your 
your basic kits. So I had to go out and buy a 24 mil. I thought the, the one for taking your, the wheels off your car would do it, but no. <laughs> uh, yeah, take the pulley off and make sure you grab the little key and don't lose that, very important. And there's a washer as well. And finally a snap ring. I was really lucky to get this off first time. My cheapo snap ring tool, I don't know if you can see it, but the, it, it deflects, the, it bends and slides off the end. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got that one off. I was pretty lucky. And there's everything off of the handle side. Now back to the gearbox side again. I'm gonna take this helical uh, gear off with the six mil socket. I think it's probably easier to do it while the cutter head's still in place because it's held nicely box isn't attached so there's not really any danger I don't think anyway that's how I did it and that was nice and easy I uh, didn't remove that snap ring there a I couldn't get it off and sorry about my fat bonds in the way that's the best video I had of me tapping the shaft out theoretically we won't be using the old cutter head again so it's not a massive big deal but when you're tapping it out try to, to just use like a socket to only contact the inner ring of the bearing race. Otherwise you, you run the risk of damaging that and uh, you should be just fine. And yeah, that's everything we took out of the gearbox side. Let's start putting this thing together. Uh, first up, pinch some uh, grease from the gearbox to lube up the bearing uh, bores, just to help slide the new cutter in. Back to the handle side, we'll just clean and re-grease the bearing bore on this side as well. Then uh, put the handle back on just so we can raise the, uh, raise the carriage up so you can reach underneath to help support the cutter head when you put it in. Cutter head's got a small and large bearing on it, so you can't get this wrong. The, the large one won't fit through the hole on this side. Well, I guess it would, but you'd have to, have to hit it a lot. <laughs> So yeah, don't do that. Um, this is just be a bit delicate. You don't want to scratch up the bores. And when you get it to that spot, the, the bearing, the big bearing hits quite a bit before the little one does. So you can, you can tap that in. Um, it's very, very hard to do with only two hands. Three will be good or yeah, have a think about it a bit. <laughs> just kind of faffed about until I got it in. The main problem is that you need to support it for the, from the inside until the small bearing at the far end gets seated. In the end, I, I resorted to using this mallet and that uh, kind of worked quite well. And you can see there uh, that leaving that snap ring in is, is a good idea on that one on the far side because you can see exactly how far you have to go before you, you stop. You don't want to go too far, don't don't bash it into the ring on the far side. But uh, yeah, it's it's easy to see how far it needs to go. I just took off that big uh, big nut that came with the the new cutter. Um, and put the little one on later, the original. And uh, yeah, fun getting that that snap ring on. Uh, took me a few goes actually that one. I had to to change the the head on the pull. But yeah, all done. The uh, new cutter head is installed. Back to the gearbox side yet again and we're just going to put this little helical cutter in there. Um, just jam up the cutter head so it doesn't spin. Put a little Loctite, uh, this is the blue one, the one that's not permanent, uh, just to hold that in there nicely. Easy done with the 6mm socket again, not too tight, just to, to snug. And a bit of grease on, on that as well to facilitate the gearbox sliding back on. And then pop the gearbox back on. Just using the supplied DeWalt tool for those uh, screws. 
put the little washer back on and the chain and sprockets should fit straight back on uh, if the keys are out of whack you could spin that left hand uh, roller bar until they, they fit and put the little snap rings back on to hold that easy peasy for the little ones and then the cover and that's it for the gearbox side back we go to the handle side install the uh, washer then the little key uh, <laughs> I think I put this in sideways I don't know it didn't fit the first time but anyway uh, pulley over the key again you can't kind of get that wrong it's and the 24 nut, I used the original one, it uh, fit the threads a bit better than the, the one supplied with the shaft, with the new cutter. And then the belt. Same deal as taking it off, just kind of wheel it on, wear your gloves, it is very easy to pinch your fingers. Uh, have a look in that top hatch, uh, make sure that the belt's seated on the top and the bottom. I always have trouble with this little thing. I forget it's just a cap, it's not a screw. But there you can see that the belt's not quite sitting right. We'll get that correct before we, before we move on. Easy done. By moving the, the cutter head, um, you can check that the belt's riding smoothly. And it is now, so we're all good. Next, pop the idler back on. Then the, the chain and sprocket. The tensioner spring, I had a lot of trouble with this. I think you should use like a little needle or, or some, something small that you can fit in there. Anyway, you get there in the end. Uh, put the four mil bolts uh, back onto that left hand sprocket and then pop all the covers back on and we're done with the handle side. I'll probably the handle as well. <laughs> we're getting close now. I just put the lock plate back in um, and uh, yeah, we're just about ready for a test run. Um, no point putting all the, the little cutter knives on just yet. Uh, we'll just, yeah, see if it works first. Getting really nervous at this point. So this is the moment of truth. Um, I'm about to plug it in and turn it on. I haven't put the, the cutters on yet because there's a lot of them. And if I've stuffed this up, there's no point putting them on. So let's plug it in and see what happens. You should probably all stand back. I'm, I'm very nervous about this. Now I've just got to put the cutters in. Back to the top for the last time. We just remove the lid and the dust extractor again. And then we can go about installing all the little knives. There's mention of tightening these to six newton meters, I think, but the instructions say that you should tighten them to a maximum of six newton meters. Uh, and in particular, if you're using like a, a screw gun to put them in, uh, just quickly put them all in up the same way. So I've started mine with a little dot, uh, all in the same, pointing in the same direction so that I know once I've used one side, I can rotate uh, to the one and uh, yeah, work my way through the four faces of the teeth. So there we are, all installed, put everything back together and we can uh, think about making some wood chips. We're nearly done. Very, very exciting. A few spares left over, four cutters and four screws. Time to make some wood chips. I've got complete confidence at this point, really. Um, I know that 
the helical cutter will be good. Um, I, I knew that before I did it. The first test run was the scary one. That was when I was worried I might blow the gearbox up. But this one, <laughs> yeah, is all good. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, I have installed a helical cutter head in my DeWalt DW735. Uh, it went pretty smoothly. Uh, I think I've done that whole video in what, roughly 15 minutes. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so I think this shows that yeah, a beginner can do it. I've never done anything like that before. Uh, I installed a new head gasket on my very first car. First time I drove it, I got uh, canaried by the police because the engine was smoking. So it's not a <laughs> it's not a skill set that I have. Anyway, um, I think that this video would be kind of really easy to follow for someone trying it out, trying something like this out for the first time. So I hope you find that too. Um, I would highly recommend uh, looking at some other videos. I'll leave the four that I used uh, linked in the description below. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the improved efficiency of my new cutter head. Very exciting. So yeah, if you like this one, give us a like, think about a subscribe, and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks guys.